Hi, Ray here. I'm glad you could join me for this look at Angel Bird Type B CF Express cards. And just a quick look at the packaging, which I think is very nice. Angel Bird has done, done a great job of uh, packaging on this item. And, you know, packaging is always part of the unboxing experience. So let's have a look here, if I can. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, and there's the card right there. And there's the card reader, which uh, we'll pull out later. Now, I'm relatively new to CF Express. For instance, I didn't switch over from XQD cards when that became an option for my Nikon Z6s with firmware 2.20 back in 2019. I was quite happy with XQD and at the time, CF Express were much more expensive. But CF Express are now pretty much essential for cameras like the Nikon Z9, if you want to take advantage of their speed and video capabilities. Speaking of firmware updates, earlier in March, Angelbird released updates for their cards. AVX 2.12 for CF Express Type B, SE, SX, Mark II added compatibility for Nikon camera models D850, D5, D6, D500, Z6, and Z7. That improved performance and squished some bugs. AVX130 for CF Express Type B Mark I cards includes updated temperature monitoring, updated life cycle calculation, bug fixes, and we'll also cover previous update version AVX1.20 providing improved pre-boot algorithm and optimized boot up time. I've heard the complaints and yes, it's a bit of a pain to have to update firmware and to have to do so with a proprietary card reader. Having said that, we should be used to performing regular firmware updates on many of our electronic devices in 2022. Our computers, phones, tablets all have regular updates. Cameras that once came with an operating system that didn't change until the next iteration of the camera, we now expect to have new features, functions, and improvements delivered years after we buy the camera. I have lights, uh, radio triggers, all kinds of stuff that get bug fixes via firmware updates. I know that Delkin recently updated firmware in their CF Express cards. This is a good thing, right? Before I begin, Full disclosure, Angelbird sent this 330GB AV Pro CF Express Type B XT Mark II card for me to try out. And I'll do a, a basic speed test later. I get to keep the card and the reader they included, but Angelbird have no say in my conclusions. They don't get to vet this video. And as always, my opinions are my own. So let's take a look at the update procedure for these Angelbird cards. First, you need to download the update tool for either Mac OS or Windows. And I'm a Mac user, so that'll be the focus here. But if you're a Windows user, it looks like your job will be somewhat easier. Mac users will have a bit more of a complicated process. And furthermore, if you're the owner of a Silicon Mac with the new M1 chips, the process is more complex yet due to advanced security settings. And we've all run into those issues even with uh, Intel-based Macs, and that's where I'm at. EA Mac security features. Instructions are included for OS Catalina, Big Sur, and Monterey. As noted in the manual, quote, for Mac OS Mojave, drivers don't need approval. Just follow the instructions on screen and flow into the firmware update. The main point here shared amongst all users is that you must ensure the card reader is, all caps, disconnected from the computer before you begin. And that seems to be a constant in the instructions. But again, as per the manual, the firmware tool guides you through the steps required to check for and install firmware updates for the cards. Okay, that's all in theory. <laughs> so let's see how this goes. And here's our, here's our card reader, somewhere in, somewhere in there, yeah, there's cables. Okay, so let's do the update. You're joining me live here, so this is a first for me. We'll see how it goes. We're just going to follow the instructions here. And the process is as follows. 
ensure the card reader, again, <laughs> ensure the card reader is disconnected, all caps, from the computer. So we've got that. And we're now instructed to start the app, which I have downloaded here. So we'll start the app. And um, here's the update tool. We start that. It says next. Um, let's get your CF Express Type B card updated with the latest firmware. Before starting, it's mandatory that you're using the Angelbird CF Express card reader. We've been over that. Please ensure at this point that the card is safely ejected and card reader is unplugged. So we're all good there. Here it is. And we hit next. Wants me to OK that. We'll install the helper. And it's asking me to be patient. <laughs> well, we'll be patient. While we're doing that, I think we can plug. Um, OK, we've got a. Here's, well, we're going to plug the card in, but I can see here we've got system extension blocked. Program tried to load a new system. If you want to enable these extensions, open security. So <laughs> okay, have to open that. so I'll spare you the agony of sitting through what turned out to be something of an epic to get past the Mac security firewall. I'm running Monterey on this 2020 Intel MacBook Pro, and it required giving permission to the Angelbird software and a restart of the computer. I dithered over all that for about 10 minutes minimum. After that, everything went according to plan and the update itself was short and sweet. Afterwards, the Mac kept telling me via pop-ups that the, quote, disk wasn't readable. That was a bit confusing, but the Angelbird update app assured me that everything went according to plan, so I dismissed Apple's irritating alerts and after the final cleanup phase, ejected the card ready for use in the Z9. That's the firmware update completed. So the next thing here to do is format the memory card in the camera. It's in slot one. All pictures will be deleted. There aren't any, so okay. And we're done. <laughs> we're done with that. Let's have a look at how the card performs in the Nikon Z9 as far as burst shooting. So let's see, we've got it in burst mode here. 20 frames a second, lossless raw. So let's give it a go. Okay, started to stutter there. How many shots did we get before it started to stutter? 70. 70 frames. So what I can tell you right now is that's very competitive with any of the other CF Express cards that I have. Uh, some much more expensive than this. So I, that's quite good. Listen. That's going to be more frames per second, or, or I should say, um, images at one sh at one press than I'm ever going to need. I can't really see me needing any more than those initial 70 frames. And probably, let's give this a test. If you take the finger off and and reshoot. So here we go. I mean, now we've got 424 images <laughs> to sort through. So yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the performance is, is just excellent. And now, how about high efficiency? Okay, so let's do a raw recording. We'll do high efficiency store. We're good to go. Let's check that. High efficiency store. That's what we want. Format our memory card in slot one. Yes. And that's crazy. <laughs> that's, I mean, I, yeah, where, where are we at now? That's 167 when I stopped there. 167 images. I don't think I'll ever need any more than that at uh, one burst. This card, again, it's the XG Mark II is rated with a read speed of 1785 megabytes a second and a write speed of 1600 megabytes a second. But it's those sustained write speeds we're interested in for fast action burst photography and video. And this card is rated at 1480 megabytes a second, which is in the same ballpark as other fast cards on the market. 
Delkin, for instance, advertises their Black Series cards as 1400 to 1710 megabytes a second minimum sustained write speed. I think that's, I'm not sure if that's for all of the, um, the capacities, but anyway, according to Angelbird, this card supports consistent write performance for long duration recording throughout the capacity of the card. And that's an important point because it's no use if things start slowing down as data accumulates. Now, I haven't put this card through long-term usage. I've only had, whoop, <laughs> I've only had the Z9 for a couple of weeks. So really, all my CF Express cards are in early testing stage along with the Z9 for that matter. But I'm happy with the performance so far, both of this card and the Z9. I can tell you from three years experience that the same form factor of Sony XQD cards I've been using have been error-free, touch wood, <laughs> although I'm not sure if this is real wood. So anyway, I've never had a reason to be anxious about the single card in my Z6s. I'll certainly be monitoring my experience with these and other CF Express cards I'll be picking up in the months ahead. 330 gigabytes is not huge when it comes to accommodating 8K video, ProRes 422HQ, and RAW capture. They're not cheap, and as I stressed from my first commentary on the Nikon Z9, they're part of the buy-in for anyone considering jumping into this arena. But I think the Angelbird cards are price competitive and certainly worth consideration. Well, I hope this video has proved useful. If you think so, give it the old thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell to be alerted to new content. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Cheers, and we'll see you later.